Hi, I'm Kevin Harrington, an original shark from Shark Tank. Ultimate Bundles connects you with the best teachers online. Welcome to Five Steps to Keeping Your Patience as a Parent. I know that one of our goals in parenting is probably not to yell as much, not to react as strongly emotionally, be able to keep her cool, keep it under control. Well, I am here to tell you that there is a huge misconception about being a more patient parent because a lot of times we think that, you know, we just shouldn't react to situations as much, but there is another key to that. There's the key of taking care of ourselves, honoring our own emotions as parents, making sure that we are taken care of, we have that self-care, we have those restoring activities to uh, give us more patience as a parent. I'm Joanne Crone and I am so excited to be here with you today. Uh, my goal is to help you be an amazing parent, but also take care of your own self, take care of your own needs. Those things go hand in hand and here's how we're gonna make it happen. I want you to think of this acronym when you think about having more patience as a parent and it's peace. And it stands for pause, ease, assumptions, chase the why, and exhale. Because before you can start preventing the yelling and the reactions, uh, you need to first reflect and figure out, well, what caused my reaction in the first place? What, what made me feel that way in that moment? I definitely want you to leave this session having some strategies that you can put into place so that the next time something happens, you can start and think of peace and have a way to react. Pause a lot of times, like you hear, take a breath. Uh, you know, be calm in the moment. That's not what pause is because when our emotions are going full tilt and like that anger just builds up inside of us, there is no stop in that train. Like we can't just hit the brakes and be like, whoa, I should pause. It doesn't work that way. Instead, what I want you to think of with pause is after the situations happen, after you've lost your temper and maybe you've yelled or maybe you have said something that you regret, I want you to go back and look at that situation. You're pausing after the fact. And when you look at the situation, look for these specific things that might have been going on. We like to think of it as an acronym of HALT. So I want you to ask yourself, were you hungry when it happened? Hunger has such a bearing on situations. Hungry is an issue, so ask yourself, was I hungry? Was I angry? Was something else bothering me in that situation? Did something happen in at work that I may not have dealt with emotionally to like the fullest extent yet. Or was I angry at something else that was going on in the house? Because when we're angry at other situations, that can spew off into our kids and into our family. Was I lonely? Parenting's an extremely lonely job. And when we're lonely, we lash out when things don't go our way. So ask yourself that question. What, were you lonely or were you tired? Tired has such a bearing on our emotions and our patience and what we're able to withstand in a given moment. So when you think, okay, was I tired? There's no way that you can stop a reaction if you were tired and you didn't have that rest behind you to, to help you be patient. So all of these factors right here, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, they all have bearing on your patience. And when you're able to pause and look back at them, you're able to give yourself a little more self-compassion and also maybe key your brain up for a little more self-care of having a snack, of talking with that person you're angry with instead of letting it fester, of making connections outside your home, and of prioritizing sleep. Although, if you have a child under five, prioritizing sleep is very hard. This is pause. Go back and reflect. The second is ease. We want a way to easily deal with the behavior situation when it comes up. Maybe it's that one of your children is supposed to unload the dishwasher and they haven't unloaded the dishwasher and you've asked them a billion times to unload the dishwasher. Like what's an easy way that you can handle this situation? When then, it's simply saying when this happens, 
then this can happen. It's not a bribe. It's not a punishment. It's just dictating the order that things happen in your house. So here's some examples of it. When the dishes are put away, then we go to dance. So if you have a child who has dance classes regularly, they love them, they look forward to them, or they know that they need to be there, dictate that order. Say that this chore needs to be done and then we go. Or when you're ready for school, then you can play video games. This is a great one for our kids who are lagging a little bit in the morning because if they have something they really look forward to and they have that buffer, that time buffer before they have to be out the door, this is a great one to get kids ready in the morning. So this ease, this using a statement where you can simply state it, you don't have to do any bribing, you don't have to do any negotiation, you're just simply dictating the order of events. It works really, really well. That third in peace is assumptions. A lot of times this is where we can get ourselves pretty worked up as parents because we as humans we like to find reasons behind people's behaviors. Like it helps us if we can really like understand it in our brain why somebody acted a certain way and so we fill in. We fill in assumptions. We do this for pets too but it's a little less like destructive in pets. We're like oh they're looking at me that way because they are really excited to go to dog school. That's what I say about my dog Addie all the time. So our brains fill in these assumptions. It's completely normal, it's completely natural, and what I wanna do right now is I wanna make you aware of some of these assumptions that you might be filling in for your own kids. Because we like to think of behavior as an iceberg. There are certain behaviors that we always see. We see them above the surface. And a lot of times we're assuming the reason for these behaviors that may not be the case. For example, when we see our kids talking back, we think, oh, it's because they're disrespectful. It's because I haven't set good enough boundaries as a parent. It's because I have failed in my parenting ways. We like to blame ourselves and we like to think of reasons for things happening. And these assumptions are what is causing our emotions to go higher and higher until all of a sudden we can't help but break. And so what's helpful instead? Well, we wanna be chasing the why. <laughs> we wanna figure out the actual reasons behind our kids' behaviors so that we're not thinking about these destructive assumptions which are making us matter and matter and matter. We look for the real reason. And the truth is, is that since behavior's an iceberg, there are actually all these reasons lying underneath the surface as to why uh, our kids are acting the way they're acting. They are things like lagging skills. A lot of this is like the kids don't know how to transition. Kids aren't sure about um, how, to, how to transition from doing one thing to doing the other thing, like watching TV to going to bed. It's not that they're being defiant, it's just they don't have that skill to transition effectively. These are all reasons why you see these behaviors happening. And none of it has to deal with your failure as a parent, and you're not failing as a parent, by the way. None of it has to deal with raising a disrespectful child or having your child be disrespectful. They are all just human needs that are lurking under the surface. So if you ask yourself, okay, when you see your child talking back and the reason they're talking back or the reason they're not listening to you is because they're hungry or they're tired, right away, your patience probably improves. Your emotions aren't as high, you're not as mad at the situation because you're like, oh, okay, well, you need a snack. You need to eat <laughs> because it's not a personal attack against you anymore. It's a physiological need that your child has at that moment. And exhale is the common calm down strategies that you hear that are usually offered first to help people be more patient. But it's not first. There's all of this work that you need to do before you can even utilize those calm down strategies. Because again, it's not how our brains work. So with exhale, Here's a few calm down strategies you can try. 
I always like to remove myself from the situation if I feel myself getting angry. And this is my favorite excuse. I need to go get something over there. <laughs> like if I'm in my daughter's room and she says something that makes me upset, I'm like, I need to go get my water bottle. And I leave the room because I could feel my anger, I can feel my emotions, and I need some time to get it under control. And you deserve some time to get it under control as well. Excuse yourself to the bathroom. No one bothers you in there. It's like your own personal suite. You, you close the door and you're able to get your thoughts together, you're able to get your reasoning more intact and calm down so that when you do feel yourself calm down, you can react in a much more logical way. Or my favorite, favorite calm down strategy ever is to talk myself down aloud. Because probably like me, you see that your kids also need help with the calm down strategies. That they need a little more tool, like few more tools in their tool belt to help them calm down. Um, and maybe deep breathing doesn't work for them. So how do you teach calm down strategies to your kids? Well, you can talk yourself through the calm down strategy when you're experiencing the emotion. So it sounds something like this. He's be like, I am so angry that I got yelled at right now. I'm really, really upset about it. I'm feeling used. I'm feeling hurt. Let me take a deep breath. Okay, I'm feeling a little bit better. I think I need to excuse myself and go to the other room and lay down just for a little bit until I can feel a bit better and talk about this. And I talk aloud through it. And when you do that for the first time, your kids look at you and they're like, what has happened here? But they also see how your self-talk is going on in your brain to help you calm yourself down. And when you do this enough, you're gonna see your kids start adopting the same strategies that you do. So those are some exhale strategies that you can use. I want you to right now Put these into practice. Think of a, the last time that you lost your patience, that you didn't fulfill that parenting goal of being more patient. And go through the peace steps. Pause. Were you hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? Did any of that happen? Think of ease. How could you have used a when then to help yourself through that scenario and to tell your child what the steps that were going to happen? A, what assumptions were you holding about your kids in that moment? What might have gotten you a lot more angry? What self-talk did you have going on? C, chase that why. Was there another reason for your kid's behavior? Was there another explanation that had nothing to do with shame or with guilt or any disrespect or disobedience on their part? And E, exhale. Think of what strategy that you want to use in the future to take yourself out of the moment and bring yourself some more calm and some more peace before you logically deal with the situation. And I need to tell you that E for exhale, it may not happen right away. You may not be able to catch yourself right away when you're angry and that is okay because the more you go through the first four steps of the process, the pause, ease, the assumptions, and the chasing the why, the better able you will start recognizing in the moment when you need to take a break and when you need to remove yourself.